The US military has lost contact with the fastest aircraft ever built during a test flight. The Falcon glider is designed to go so fast that it can get from London to Sydney in under an hour. But the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency lost communication with it just 36 minutes into Thursday's flight. The Falcon was launched from Florida into space inside a rocket-propelled vehicle. On reaching suborbital space, the Falcon popped out of the rocket and began its flight back into the upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere. The glider was expected to reach Mach 20, that's about 21,000 kilometers per hour during its glide phase. It was to perform a series of test maneuvers in order to assess its performance before making a controlled descent and ditching into the Pacific Ocean. Earlier, I spoke to Philip Ewing. He's a reporter for Military.com and an editor of DoD Buzz, a U.S. defense online journal. I asked him for more details on what happened to the aircraft. DARPA announced today that it uh, had uh, conducted this test as planned. Uh, the vehicle had gotten away from the rocket ship that you mentioned a moment ago, and then uh, we don't know what happened. Uh, we presume the vehicle uh, splashed down in the Pacific, or crashed in the Pacific more likely, uh, as it was programmed to do if it lost uh, contact with controllers. But beyond that, uh, we don't have many details at this point. Now, if we look at this project, what's, what's the purpose behind it? Why is the Air Force or the Pentagon so keen to put something into uh, low orbit up there? Well, the context here is that the Pentagon for the past decade or so has wanted something it calls prompt global strike. It wants the ability to strike a target anywhere in the world in about an hour's notice. So it needs a new, very fast, advanced weapon, probably one that involves space or high speeds and high altitudes like this, to be able to get there. And uh, the process going forward is how do you build a weapon or how do you build a plane or a spacecraft that can do this mission and that's where we are with this experiment today. So how big a setback is this? Because this is not the first time one of these aircraft uh, or one of these uh, gliders have crashed. This is the second time, isn't it? That's right. And uh, that's an excellent question. And we'll know more going forward as DARPA and the Air Force and the Pentagon talk about this. What they might say is that uh, you have to fail to succeed when you're developing a new weapon, especially something as new and advanced as this. So it's possible they could have learned uh, some good lessons from the test today that they can use if they decide to go forward. But at this point, uh, we don't really know. So what would they be looking at? Uh, what's the next step for them? Well, what they need to be able to do going forward is test with a real vehicle how something traveling this fast at this altitude actually behaves. You can model it with computers and with wind tunnels to a certain degree, but what the Air Force really wants and what DARPA really wants is to put something actually up that high and have it fly this fast at Mach 20 and just see how it behaves. How can it turn? How can it uh, maneuver? And uh, that'll inform uh, programs like this and others uh, in the future.